So today, what we are trying to do is to give you a, let's say, introduction overview on how to use the Philips U that are here on the table and uh, uh, the Z-Wave device that I have just one of them here, this one, that for example some group can use or would like to use to co control, turn on and off uh, the power of the attached device. I will put here so it work. So to do so, uh, we have created a couple of projects in PyCharm that are already on the GitHub, uh, pro, uh, GitHub uh, organization of the course that are called Python U and Python Z Wave. That are these two here. So this is for the Philips U, and uh, the other one that I will show you after is for the Z-Way device. So, uh, a couple of, let's say, background information about Philips U and Z-Wave to understand how it works and what you can do with it. So, developers.meetu.com Okay, so basically you in the lab have this uh, bench that, as you know, is composed by a router that gives you the Wi-Fi network, the MEI course, the MEI course 5G network. In Ladispe, this router is connected to the internet. Here is not in this moment. And then in this bench, you also have, we can use this probably yeah you can also have this one that is the u bridge the version one of the u bridge right now there is a second version of this that is more or less equivalent uh, these are these are these have some uh, le feature less like the support for omakit by apple but from the philips u point of view they are almost equivalent and then you have this Raspberry Pi here, when, in which this board is the controller for the Z-Way wireless network. So, this is briefly the hardware setup. So, the Philips U bridge here creates a wireless network based on ZigBee, the uh, smart lightning profile that, as the name say, is for handling lights, only lights. And so it defines that you have an object that is called a light, and you can perform some different operation that light. You can turn it on, you can turn off the light, you can change the color, change the brightness, change the luminosity, uh, change other, uh, apply some effects, and so on. And the protocol, the ZigBee protocol, specify that to use this, a series of steps to use this infrastructure here, that apply for the mobile app and also apply for the programmer part. So, how do you use this from the application? So, I downloaded the application, it's available for iPhone, for Android phone, and there are two versions right now. The version number one is dedicated to this, and the version number two is more general purpose, but it should work. Uh, notice the should work with also this second version, the first version. This is the second version of the app. So first thing, it, if it's connected to the wireless network, look for the bridge on the network. And it can put some time to do this. Okay, then if you are lucky, it find the bridge. Otherwise, by pressing on the Guida, on settings, on the help, you can also insert the IP address of the bridge, if you know that. Uh, I have uh, pressed, uh, found the bridge, I press the button, and the application asked me to press the patch link on the bridge 
before the line on the bottom will go to zero. And this is the, let's say, a security feature because before, yes, absolutely. Uh, because before working with a bridge, you have to press the button on the bridge. So if one person in the, in the street uh, come in and log into your Wi-Fi network, even if you have a Philips Hue bridge and he find a Philips Hue bridge, it needs to press the button, physically press the button on the bridge to use your, your lights, even for, for the, from the standard app or from a custom made app. So here I obviously need the, the, the version number one of the bridge. So let me download it. Okay, so not the so if you want to use it, you have to download the first the version number one of the bridge app, and then after you uh, open the app, you can effectively control the all the lamps that you have co you have connected in your home and associated to that specific bridge, and this work with the standalone app and also for your perspective as a developer if you are creating an application for the Philips Hue you have to perform the step of pressing the button at a certain point and get the authorization to use the, lamp, the lamps. Uh, this authorization comes in the form of a token that uh, in this moment is hidden uh, in the app and is exchanged between the bridge and the, and the app but in your program you have to ask the, the, the token into the bridge and insert in your program the token so let me check why it's taking so long More or less as before uh, this token for example in the code that is available or already available on github is that one called the username line 12 rtm and so on obviously this token is not valid anymore right now but we need to regenerate if you need to use the philips u in your project you need to regenerate the code to get your application working with the bridge and the lamps so, how we can do this? So, there is uh, documentation, obviously, in the website developer.meetu.com, and you have to log in to access this documentation. You can create your account and work with it. It's free, but you have to, to create one. And I access with one account that we have, if I remember the password. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the develop, there is this get started guide in which they told you what to do to create your first application with the Philips Hue. Starting from very basic things like turn on your bridge and make sure that the bridge is connected to your network and is working and test it with the smartphone app. That was a thing that I would like to tr try when the application ends to download. <coughs> um, 
Then let's suppose that everything works right now. You need to discover the IP address of the bridge on the network. And we already know the IP address of the bridge. The IP address of the bridge is this one, 192.168.0.201. And on that page, if you connect to this address with a browser, I need to connect to MEI course, for example. Okay, and if I open this, you see some static information about the bridge, like all the prod all the open source products that the bridge is using right now with a relative website, license, and so on. But you cannot obviously do anything from here with the Philips U lamp. Um, so next things that you have to do to get the token to, to start working is to reach the address https bridge ip address debug slash clip dot html and look for an interface like this this interface allow you this interface is working on the bridge and allow you to get access to the rest api that the bridge exposes so through this interface you call the rest api through this or other interface, you can always call the REST API that are made available from the bridge. And what this REST API do, allow you, for example, to turn on a lamp, how? By indicating the address, slash API, slash your token that is provided in the first time, slash lights, and with a get, you get the, all the lights, with a put, with a body, on, false, you turn off a given lights, in this case lights number one, on state, you, turn on a, you can turn off a, a lamp by giving false to the on property, you can turn on a lamp by giving true to the on properties, you can also give separate value for uh, changing colors, and notice that uh, the way in which Philips U handle color is not the traditional red green and blue uh, space of color but it's something more complex based on in two way the first way is based on an x y um, set and the other is instead by declaring a u so a color let's say a, a u that is a number the brightness of that specific color the saturation of that color and you can combine these three value or you can put together a value in the xy uh, graph to get a color and you can if you are properly set up on the internet you can in this core concept you can also have a look at other properties removing lamp removing authorization change uh, apply some different effect to get other information from the bridge and so on So, let's try, if this work, we need to get the, we need to get this uh, token to have our application working. So this is the clip debugger that is working on the bridge. You have, it's quite simple, you have an URL here the four HTTP methods, the message body, and the, uh, and the response that is provided to, uh, from the bridge. So by following this instruction, you say, okay, to get started, let's make a GET request to this URL. So let's replace this URL and let's perform a GET. If we perform this, you notice a message that say, you are not authorized, you are an authorized user. And so what you need to do is to register a new device, a new application in the bridge, for the bridge. And how do you do this? You perform a post operation on the API URL, so uh, IP address of the bridge, slash API, and in the body, you put the device type as a key and as a value, a name, a purpose, or your app, hash, 
the device, the name of the device that you want to register to the bridge. So you can have, in the, in the Philips idea, you can have multiple app on the same device. And so they would like to store both information on the bridge. So here everything is on the bridge, is nothing right now on the internet, also because this is right now disconnected from the internet. So let's do this. So API, the message body is something similar to this. And we can call it test app and let's call it macbook so when i press we need to perform a post operation and when i pr press the button to perform a post we received again an error and we will have a look at this that is notice that the link button is not pressed and this is the moment in which you have to press the button to complete the operation and after pressing the button you have to redo the same operation uh, with a post like before and in this time if you press the button in let's say 30 seconds you don't receive anymore an error but you receive a, a success message with a, a long username that is a token that is needed in your application to use for every single call to use the that you made to, to use the REST API for the Philips Hue bridge. So let's perform this operation. So a post, let's say link button not pressed. So I can press the link button, press post again, and the bridge say, okay, this is your username. Please remind it, write it somewhere because you have no other chance to get it from the bridge. You have to request a new username. So uh, this username from now up to its duration will work from everywhere. This bridge is reachable from the internet because it's a valid username. It passed, so let's say, the security step of pressing the button, the physical button on the bridge. And so since this video will go on the YouTube uh, channel, I will delete this token uh, tomorrow probably so that uh, everyone that is passing through the Ladispe cannot turn on off your lamp during your exam without your knowledge for example so I can copy this and can put it in the proper field of the uh, our code mm -hmm. and so here we can in reality perform other operation like for example ask for all the lights registered in the bridge so when you ask when you call the rest api of the philips u bridge you receive a json that contains in this case is a get for getting all the lights connected to the bridge and say you have several lights one two three four five six seven eight nine nine lamps lamps that has as a d four five six and so on we don't have lamps with id number one two three not because it's not supported here but because probably in the past we had this lamp then we remove this lamp from the bridge and we reassociate the lamp to the bridge and they get a new number a new identification every time so if, if we for example remove lamp number four and we re-add the same hardware lamp we will get a lamp number whatever it is 14 for example and for each lamp this the api will give you the state of the lamp so lamp number four is turned off it was turned off so the brightness was zero the hue was zero, the saturation was zero, the effect that is applied on that lamp was none. The color according to the XY graph is zero, zero. There are no alert, is reachable, no is not, so probably is or the lamp in the box or a lamp in Ladispe. It has a, la a type, it is a color light. You can also have light without color only white light 
we only have color light here it has a name that is set in the app so this is the name that is the in the app you will see this lamp like you color lights number two it has a number a manufacturer a model ID, a unique unique ID, as a software version because this is the internet of things so the bridge can be updated and also the firmware on the lamp can be updated so this version number can change and instead lamp lamp number five is reachable so probably is one of these two lamp here and it's on and it has a given value of brightness so it's almost the maximum brightness it has a value of u that should be this yellowish color it has a saturation and right now it has no effect applied and this is called u color light 3 and it has the same properties as before it has a manufacturer that is philips because these are all philips u lamp but this is the zigbee uh, smart lighting profile so you can go to ikea and bought some lamp from ikea and you can work you can use it with the same bridge of philips and here instead of philips you will see ikea for example as a manufacturer because everything that is working with zigbee smart lightning will work interoperability with this platform with this system okay right now we have also the probably the app that's working yeah maybe in the right wi-fi network come on and here we are again looking for the bridge okay bash link as before okay perfect so here you see that there is a, a room that is called yeah you don't see but you maybe see that is there is a room that is called lab that is the only room in which all the light are memorized and here we have the philips u light number eight and the number three as a name hello you should have okay let's try again So it's trying to connect to, I don't know what, but okay, uh, let's have it thinking about it. So uh, we, in theory, we have lights number eight and number three, and uh, okay, he lost the Wi-Fi connection. okay so in theory if i turn everything on the two lamps that we are here the lamp number eight and the number three are turned on and if you go here you can also change the color of the lights and do this other nice thing here very useful and okay so this is just to testing that this work and it works let's say without any problem once it connects to the right wireless network that is again or the mei course or the mei course 5g and so back to our application uh, in our application we would like to do a really simple thing we would like to perform two operation the first one is turn on every lamp that we have connected in this case only these two and apply an effect 
that is called color loop. The color loop effect is an effect that starting from a given color, in this case from these two colors here, change colors, brightness, saturation automatically and go over forever up to you stop the effect, turn off the lamp or change manually the color or perform other specific operation on the color. So the first thing that we are going to do is to apply this color loop through the Philips Hue REST API. Then we will wait 10 seconds, more or less, and we'll turn off all the light. So here in this example, this is not the, let's say, a wonderful piece of code. I will show you uh, another code that is worse than this, but uh, it works and gives you some example to do some operation with the Philips Hue that are very practical for your project at end. So this code, what is do? Well, first of all, we define uh, the base URL that is the URL of the bridge. The Philips Hue also have uh, an emulator that you can look for in the internet and then you can uh, download and use that is this one here that is made in java and it works like the bridge and so you can uh, yeah you can work with the philips u even if you are not in the lab and you are not connected to the lab so here this emulator as a bridge as three lamps you can add lamps or remove lamps and whatever and here you can start and stop the emulator here in this black space you will see the, the message you are sending to the rest server that the emulator is emulating and the response that you get from the rest server so here you can turn off lamps tur turn on lamps change color and so on the emulator is quite good it not cover 100 percent what the bridge covered for example the color loop is uh, can, you can send a color loop message it is uh, accepted as a message as a request but you don't see the color loop in the three lamps on the bottom but you see success in this area and the color loop as you are here an example on how to use the color loop the color loop publish itself in localhost uh, on the port 8000 and it doesn't need a token or better, it needs a token that by default is new developer. So on the, on the emulator, you can also always use the new developer as a token and it works for every API. And then, then the real things or the emulator works in the same exact way. So the first things here is the base URL. The second things here is the username, this, this token that we get. Then I com we can compose the, the URL, another, let's say, more extended version of, of the base URL, that is the IP address of the bridge or the IP address and port of the emulator, slash API, slash the username you are going to use, slash lights, because since this system is all for lights, basically everything, almost everything is under the light uh, hierarchy. And then, it performed the operation that we I told you before so first thing it asks for all the light it perform a get operation with the request module to the lights URL that is the URL that I just show you and get the result as a JSON parse the results as a JSON and put it in a Python dictionary that is called all the lights then if it's a dictionary so we have no errors the, the response is valid and so on we can iterate on the dictionary the key of the dictionary is the id of each lamp so we can iterate on this create a new url that is the lights url as before slash the id of the lamp of the lamp 4 5 13 and so on slash state then we have to prepare the body of the request that we are going to do with a put that is just on true because we want to turn on the lamps if they are turned off and apply an effect in this case so just a dictionary with two values just two couples 
the first one is untrue and the second one is effect color loop and then through the request uh, library we can perform this put to the url we define by passing the body as a json file as a json content type so in this line here we perform a put operation to this uh, base url api username lights slash state slash sorry uh, the id of the lights slash state and we pass the on true effect color loop to the bridge in this case then we start waiting 10 seconds more or less and then we will do the same things for turning off the lights and to turn off we have the same url as before lights slash idea of the lights slash state but in this case we will not pass on true with an effect but we will pass on false to turn everything off then we just perform a put request to the url with that body in the content type that is proper for the json uh, request so if we can try this what we are expecting is that these two lamps start changing slowly color for 10 seconds and then they should be turned off so if you run this so you notice that they change color a little bit for 10 seconds if we wait 30 seconds they will change color for 30 seconds and then they gratefully uh, stop and turn off and if we start again we have the same process again and again and again and the philips u start from the color that they turned off before so 10 seconds of color loops and then they turned off and if we here have multiple lamp 1000 lamp we have the same effect all over all the lights that we have here so basically this is philips u uh, the same things happen for the emulator and if you reach out to the documentation you can see that for example you have all the operation that we did so for example this is the same operation but it changed the brightness so it doesn't change the color just the brightness of the of the lamp to 42 uh, because as i told you colors are representing this space in the philips u so it's not really easy but they also provide uh yes this one no a table somewhere probably get started here with the correspondence between uh, there is some way somewhere there is but i don't find it i will look for it there is uh somewhere here in this documentation a table that said that red is for example u equal to zero and u equal to six five five zero zero or something like that um, and here so for example zero is uh, is red so here for example there is a body request to, to turn the lamp in the red color so if we just comment this and uncomment this and put this on true before and maybe we also change this sorry this is not properly formatted yeah and we run this we should uh, have an error uh, yes because i'm in the wrong wi-fi network we should have both lamp turning on in red because the u equal to zero is uh, red with the brightness and saturation that was uh, applied before 
Mm? And then after 10 seconds, they turn off as before. Mm? So this is just very simple how to interact with this. There are a lot of APIs for, well, get the lights as I show you. This is the simple response. You can see the response here. You can see the response in Python. You can see the response in the, the Clipper, the bugger. You can search for new lights, get attributes like we did for getting all the lights and uh, set the state so you can, as we did before, turn on and off, uh, change the brightness, the hue, the saturation together separately, the um, setting an alert, an effect, uh, and, and so on. And here are there's examples of requests and responses. So Philips Hue as API is quite simple and the the, the simple the, the simple application that we provide to you is quite effective because it's it's simple again and you can just take the, the information you you need and control your lamp in your project and also use the emulator and this is Philips Hue um, okay moving on in a little bit more complex uh, area we have the same <coughs> more or less the same project but for z -Way. so philips u is a wireless protocol sorry zigbee is a wireless protocol uh, that create a mesh network in with lamps and according to these uh, properties it's open so the specification of the protocol are open uh, and that does this nice rest api and so on z wave is again a wireless protocol mesh protocol is cl a closed protocol so we know a little bit about how z wave works as a protocol you have to pay a great amount of money to get access to the protocol and we didn't we didn't uh, but it allow you to have different and it allow you to have different controller to that create this light this the network and allow you to interact with separate devices and differently from the philips u from this zigbee smart lighting that is only for lights z-wave support a lot a lot of different functions there are plugs, turn on and off. There are sensors for lights, temperature, humidity, pressure, gravity, just name of things and probably they have something for you. And this is less standardized, less uh, prepared than the Philips Hue. And in our case, we have this small board that is called the Raspberry. It's not the Raspberry, the Raspberry with the Z that has a server that from one side it creates a z-wave network from the other side it exposes some http api to control and have a look at all these devices so this server is available on the internet if you open a browser and you are connected to the course website uh, here this is normal it's not slow it's just normal you need a username and a password that uh, we can share with you after the video recording and you have this user interface and you can control have a look to your devices for example here this is just the expert user interface because it's it allow you to, to see more things than the other one and you see here that you have a list of uh, control you can control switches you can well get information from sensor meters thermostat locks or notification right now we just have this plug here so it's a switch it's a switch that is turned on in this moment that was updated last time in a wrong time you can switch all the the device you can update 
the information coming from the device you can turn on and off the device so if you turn on the device just to give you um, an idea you see this light here when this light is on you turn the device is turned on otherwise it's turned off so right now it's on if I press this the light is turned off so this is the only indication whether the lamp the the object is turned on or off on this network and differently from a z-wave that required this partially from a zigbee that required this patch link pressure you here have just a username and password that you can also disable on the raspberry device and we can provide you with uh, some uh, raspberry board for your project to bring home with some additional devices to bring home so you don't have to use this only in the lab like the philips u so here you can control devices look for sensor data in this case we have the same plug that is also a sensor and in this is a sensor of power and it measure zero watt because there is nothing connected and turned on on it and again there is the device type the level and the scale and the update date and here instead in device you see all the devices that are associated to the z-wave network and you see that there is the z-way that is the, the the controller and this everspring plug and this everspring plug has some properties as a device id as a brand as a description and as this common class so differently from uh, zigbee where everything is a light and so they think in terms of a single device they can perform a different operation in that way they are not thinking about devices they think about common classes they think about functions so in their idea you can take this common class put them put them together and create every device that you want so in theory you can have a plug that also is a temperature sensor and a meter and whatever you present sensor whatever you want you can take these common classes this single function and put together in a single device the producer can do this uh, if they want so this plug here in reality is a set of common classes and specific common classes so you can have a plug something that you can turn on and off that has this or a subset of this and they are for you a plug but you have to look at the common classes to understand what can you do so for example this has the basic common class every every device is a basic common class because it's the class that allow you to control the z-wave network it is a switch binary so you can switch it on and off it's binary it also have a common class that is switch all that in this case is the same as switch binary because you just cannot you can control only on and off uh, you have a meter so this sensor to getting uh, the power from the the device that is connecting to the bridge to the to the plug you have a configuration command class to configure the device you have manufacturer specific command class just in case the, com the manufacturer would like to add some further information or functionality specific to their uh, products so for example here we have everspring that can add some information additional information then you have an association a version common class that again are standard common classes that every device has so basic configuration association and version of standard common classes the other common classes can change so for example a temperature sensor will not have the switch binary the switch all and the meter uh, common classes but we will have since it's a temperature sensor the uh, multi-sensor common class and you can also click on this and see for example that this common class a is as a level as some interview some other information and same things for here the meter you see for example here that the meter measure in reality two properties uh, power and energy and in both cases these are zero right now and these are information that you are have depicted here but you get from the rest api from the http api 
of the Raspberry server that is running on this Raspberry that is a traditional normal Raspberry. And differently from the Philips U in which you open the app and say, okay, I have some new lights, please find them. And Philips U find the ZB network finds new lamp and allow you to see them. Here you have a process that's a little bit different that is called uh, inclusion and exclusion. So you turn on everything, you come uh, with a new device and if you just power on this, you have no app, no anything. If you just power on, it doesn't work. You have to include the device in that specific network. And if I want to take this and give you this for, for your project, and you have a different Raspberry with a different network, I need also to exclude the device from here so that you can include the device in a new network. So every device that is composed by a set of common classes is in reality included in one network at time. So right now this is included here. And if again, if I need to give you this to, to you, I need to exclude that and re-include in a new network. And how to perform this inclusion or exclusion operation, every Z-Wave device has a button. Here is obvious, is the button to turn on and off the plug. Also even sensors as a button somewhere and you have to press the button let's say from one to three four times very quickly to perform the inclusion and the inclusion the exclusion obviously the device should be powered on so plugs are always power on sensor have battery or other type of alimentation of power and so they should be powered on and so for example if i would like to don't break anything okay if I'd like to exclude this I can start exclusion yeah I know okay so the exclude the, the server the web page is ready to exclude if I press the button sometime uh, it should be excluded and if I look for sometime the user interface doesn't, doesn't work very well so in this case we have no feedback but you have no more con device to control and so we can re-add so we can start inclusion and you see here that they're ready to include press a button on the device to be included and I pro can press this sometime and very slowly I see that here we have just the device back with ID number three because we just removed device number two and we added device number three and another properties of this is this interview bar that should be 100% the interview process is a process that happens during the configuration the, the association that is a way for the network to read all these common classes and properly fill the information to expose this information through the API. Another characteristic of Z-Way that we cannot see here is that uh, while devices like plugs are always powered on because they are typically in a, in a wall or something like that, sensors with battery are not are always powered on but they go to sleep so plugs does never sleep but sensor sometimes sleeps so you can only send and get information in real time real information the last version of the information the most up updated information when the device is not sleeping so if the sensor temperature is measuring temperature and is sleep 15 minutes, you don't get a new value of the temperature for 15 minutes. You have to force the device to wake up the device and then ask for the temperature. Mm -hmm. This doesn't happen for devices like plugs or something like that because they are always powered. But from battery powered device, they go to sleep and you can uh, configure this here in this tab you have in this case not but you have here in the bottom a 
uh, some configuration for sleeping, for reducing the sleep time, and so on. And to wake up a device, you just you typically just have to, for devices that are uh, sleeping, press the update button or the equivalent in the rest in the API to update the value so the device wake up, update its value, communicate its value back, and go sleeping again. So this is how the Z-Wave network work, how it works from a programming point of view. This is the same program as before, let's say functionally, the same program as before. This is quite a mess as a program. Uh, but the idea as before is we would like to turn on everything for 10 seconds and then turn off everything after 10 seconds. And in the meantime, if we have sensor, we get also information from sensors in the first 10 seconds. So as before, we have a base URL, that is the URL of the controller. Uh, we have a username and password that can be deactivate as authentication. That in our case, the username is admin and the password is MEI Z wave. Then we have, uh, again, a device URL that is composed by the base URL. Then it's a little bit more complex than before. We have this Z wave API slash run slash devices something dot instances something dot common classes something. So these common classes are the common classes we have seen before. This number here inside devices is the ID of the device and instances is another ID, typically zero, one or two, not, not bigger than one, that identify the single instance inside of a device. So in Z-Wave, Common classes are contained inside one instance and the device contains one or more instances. So for example, if we have a temperature, humidity and light sensor, we'll have several common classes, but all the common classes related to temperature are maybe in the instance number zero and all the common classes related to light are in the instance number one. Because temperature, for example, and humidity are continuous values and so you can uh, have an instances for all the continuous values from the sensor while lights is not continuous or presence or is not continuous you or, uh, all, or have movement present or don't have so you uh, have maybe another instances and all these are inside a device it is the device number whatever three let's say then you have i put here some in important common classes because in the API you cannot set the name of the common class you cannot say binary switch uh, switch binary you have to say that binary switch binary is 37 so it's the common class number 37 this is standard from the protocol this is also in the documentation of the Raspberry API similarly a sensor, a sensor binary so everything that has two uh, as a common class two values uh, presence or not presence for example is common class number 48, like a sensor multi, temperature, humidity, light, luminosity, power, and so on. So continuous value are common class number 49. So with this information set up, we call the main function that is here, that as before, get all the device from the, the controller, then for all devices, for all devices, for all instances in that device, if the device is a switch binary, then we can turn on the device. Otherwise, if it is a sensor multi, we can instead get the value from the sensor multi because a sensor. And if it is a sensor binary, we can instead get, for example, the motion from the sensor binary. Notice that here you don't have if elif elif because since but three separate if because here you are investigating common classes and a device could be 
a switch binary and a sensor multi and a sensor binary and we i would like to have all the information from all these common classes no matter if they are in what in a single device or in three separate devices so in our case we will go probably in switch binary and we okay we will not go here because we cannot is not a temperature luminosity or humidity but we would, can also go in the sensor multi probably um, class no we go in the in the meter class it is not in this um, sample mm -hmm. so if we for example have instead a uh, multi-sensor temperature humidity and uh, motion we will not go in the first if but we will go in the second in the third if because here we can get temperature luminosity and uh, humidity while here we get motion or not motion from that device mm -hmm. so to get all the device we just have to call a uh, URL that is quite different from before and pass the authentication parameter username and password as before in this way with the request library and take everything as a JSON and in this list uh, I also remove uh, the first device that is the, the gateway the controller because you typically don't perform any operation you cannot perform an operation on that controller you are interested in the device so you can remove the first the device number with id number one that is always the controller of the network so the main class here let's say in the switch binary turn on uh, all the device that has the common class switch binary and how do you turn on you you need three information the device id the instance of that device or the instance that contains this the switch binary command class and the value to turn on or off the device in z wave 255 turn on and zero turn off so if we call this set value function here you see that there is a url the device url dot set 255 and then it put in the entire string the device id the instance id and the switch binary com uh, and the switch binary command class that is 37 then it perform a get to that url again with authorization a username and password parameter to pass after the url into get mm -hmm. similar things for get values device instance and common class to get values with the difference that for getting values you have inside the response two different type may have two different type of information the first one is the actual value 0 10 21 whatever and the other is the unit of measure is watt is celsius degree is percentage whatever it is so from the same response you have to navigate a little bit in the json that is provided and get from the first line the value and from the second line the unit measure and then we can print it and we do the same things for the sensor binary that since it's a sensor binary that doesn't have a unit measure it will be true or false then as before we wait for around 10 seconds and then we turn off all the switch binary all the devices that has the switch binary class as before set value device id instance and zero to turn off and 255 to turn on so right now if you are lucky and here you don't have any emulator or something like that so if we uh, so right now the plug is turned off as you may see i will run this so the plug is turned on and after 10 seconds it will turn off as before and here you just see that you are just turning on device with device number three wait 10 seconds and then turn off device number three because again this uh, device has no sensor multi nor sensor binary command classes so this is 
quite a little bit more complex, more messy than the Philips UKs, but it's again a running example. If you need to control in your project a switch binary a device with a switch binary class, it's quite easy. If you need to handle a sensor, multi-level binary, uh, binary sensor binary, you can. You have an example here. Uh, this should also update the value from the sensors. Uh, I'm not totally sure right now, but it should. Um, but again, these are three separate examples of three quite common use cases. By memory, the first case, the switch binary, is one uh, function that at least two projects needs. So this very simple line allow you to turn on and off devices that is removing, let's say, the, the power from a, a touch device or not. So all of these, this script and the Philips script are already on GitHub. So you can download it and on Synladispe or if you have your own, or if you will have your own um, gateway for Z-Wave, you, you can try this, you can play with this. And with the Philips U, you can also use the emulator at home that is downloadable from uh, Philips U uh, emulator from uh, here. It's, it's on GitHub, but there is only a website, quite simple, that show you how to use the emulator, some instruction that the token is new developer, as I told you in the, you know, in this lecture, and that the emulator is not complete, but for what concern, turning on and off lights and changing color is, is working, with the exception of the color loop effect that you are not seeing the color loop effect, but it, it, it works as a message. It doesn't give you an error. It behaves in the same way as the bridge. So here you have instruction how to, to download it. And you, it, it has several versions in the, in the package that you download from version 0 0.1 to version 0 0.8. You can use 0 .0, the version 0 0.8 without any problem. It was the newest one updated just one year ago. So with this, we can close this overview on the Philips Hue and that way how to program, how to interact with it, with, with Python. And, and this also closed the lecture here in this room, I think, yeah, because on Monday we will have, we are going to be in the Ladispe. Also on Thursday, you will be in Ladispe, I think and up to the end of the course. We only have supervised uh, work group with exception of one Thursday that we will have in Ladispe a short lecture by me, I think, on how to prepare material for the exam to get 30 or 30 with merit or something like that. So this will be a short lecture on the best way for you on what we are expecting for you to for the evaluation of your project and what we are looking for in your project and this will be in not next week in two weeks in Ladispe just 15 20 minutes or something like that of this so this close this lecture if you have any question I'm still here I need to disassemble all of this and otherwise see you on Monday and have a good night